with the technology end of it? Yeah, I started the recording. We're streaming on Facebook. You're good to go. All right, thank you. All right, I'd like to welcome everybody. Whoa, excuse me. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Um, this is our January meeting. Happy New Year. We uh, meet the second Wednesday of every month. And our next meeting will be in February, which will be February 10th. Um, even though I don't see a flag, would we please rise and give, do the pledge to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I got a phone on my. So as in case uh, you're at the wrong meeting, this is the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Um, our board is all present this evening. Uh, we have Mr. Kevin Abrams, um, Mr. Craig Brady, Mr. Andrew Zumas, Mr. Joseph DiVenuto, uh, myself, Karen Ungerer, our recording secretary, Jessica McLennan, and our wonderful technology person, Mr. Timothy Mayer, Timothy Egan, and our attorney, Mr. Robert Dickover. Uh, let's see. I'm making a slight change on the agenda. Um, I'm moving number letter D, Fidelity Holdings, to the beginning because uh, the applicant has withdrawn their application. Uh, we received a letter from uh, Mr. Vincent Pietrzak, hope I'm saying that right. Um, basically saying that due to COVID-19, uh, they have been unable to get the documents that they need to support their um, application. And so when they get those applicate, when they get those documents, they plan to resubmit an application. So Fidelity has um, withdrawn their application. Do we need a motion to accept that, uh, Mr. Dickover? You're muted. Mr. Dick, oh, Great. there you are. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, uh, a motion to accept their withdrawal would be appropriate. Okay, do I have I'll a motion? That motion. Uh, do I have a second? I second. All right, um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous, Jess. Thank you. All right. Can, so, uh, one question before we move on, please. Sure, Joe. Um, did we ever decide what we're doing with rehearing or um, their thought about it's a new application or no, that we, we, doesn't we, apply until they come back? Yeah, it, 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 we will wait, see if they, if they come back. A lot of people say they're going to resubmit and they never do. So I don't know. All right. So it doesn't affect the standing one way or the other. Not at this time, no. I don't believe so. Correct, Mr. Dickover? No, not at this point. If they okay. come back, we'll have that discussion again. All righty. Very good. Thank you. All right. Uh, one more thing I forgot to ask if everybody read the minutes from the last uh, meeting. Yes. Do I have yes. a motion to accept those minutes? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Um, all in favor of accepting the minutes from the last meeting? Aye. 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 Okay. Sorry, Jess. <laughs> Thank okay. you. We'll see you whenever. Bye. Oh. <laughs> We're the public. <laughs> oh, for Fidelity Holdings? Yes. Oh, okay. All so right. you'll get, you'll, when they resubmit, you'll get another um, notice. Hopefully it'll be more timely with the way the post office, post office has been working mm -hmm. lately. Thank you Thank very you. much. Good night. All right. Thank you. Now. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. So our first, uh, we have no uh, new business, no action on decisions. And the first public hearing then, we're back to letter A, will be McGinley. Continuation of a public hearing for an area variance to permit the installation of an in-ground pool in a side yard, whereas pursu pursuant to section 310-25A, a swimming pool shall only be permitted in a rear yard. Said property is located in the R.25A quarter acre zoning district at 14 Smith Clove Road in Central Valley, is known on the village of Woodbury tax maps as section 230, block seven, lot three. Um, Mr. McGinley, do I see him anywhere? 
down here. I do, I do. I <laughs> see names and pictures I have to find. Um, welcome back, Mr. McGinley. <laughs> Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Um, so what you're looking for is a variance for a side yard pool when pools are supposed to be in the rear yard. Um, right. We kept the public hearing open because um, you're close to um, Route 32, which is a state highway. And we received that back and it was determined to be local determination. Um, it was received on the 16th of, the, of December and um, I'm sorry, written, dated the 16th of December, received the 22nd of December. So we're good to go as far as um, making a decision on this. Um, let me ask my board, um, the request was made for him to stake out the uh, pool did the people who wish to see that get a chance to look at what was staked out? Madam Chair, yes. uh, I, I did uh, I did see the uh, the stake in, in, in the side yard. Uh, Mr. McGinley, I believe it was a, a wooden stake in the ground painted red on the top. Uh, yeah, there were, two, there were two of them. Yeah. And I, I spray painted the corners closest to the house. Right by your Christmas tree that was outside. Right, correct. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Does anybody have any questions on the placement at this point? No, I'm pretty good no. with. It. All right. Uh, I have a question, Ms. Mr. McGinley. You said you're going to have a um, either a uh, salt or mineral chlorine generator installed. Where would that be located? Reference, you know, to the pool. Uh, I, I don't have that information yet. I'm waiting on the landscape architect to finish her or layout of everything. Okay, it was just a curiosity question. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, when I looked at the the uh, stakes, I didn't realize how close to the driveway, the side, the, the first part of the driveway when you drive in, it was. And I noticed on the map that you gave us that it's covering the circle that goes around the house, you know, the circular part of the driveway. Do you have any plans to rearrange that driveway or do anything yeah. with that? Yeah, so the, the drive coming in off of the um, the church parking lot will stay where it is. Um, it's going to be probably repaved, or I'd like to at some point do um, do the uh, the pavers with the grass in the middle um, to make it a little more natural. Um, and then down the road um, after the pool, probably some years, my plan is to bring a driveway up from uh, Perone Lane and use... The driveway off of the church parking lot as a secondary and then have the main driveway come to the front of the house. That's quite a steep driveway. It, yeah, it'll require a lot of fill actually. So, um, <laughs> so uh, that's a separate project in and of itself. So. <laughs> okay, no, I was just curious because, you know, the pool would be right over that section of the driveway. Yeah, for now it'll, it'll remain and then the fence will run right there. Um, but the, uh, at some point it will, like I said, be kind of transitioned to a more natural uh, drive and then secondary drive, so. Okay, does the board have any more questions for Mr. McGinley? I have one quick one. Sure, Joe, go ahead. Um, Mr. McGinley, you mentioned landscaping plans. Uh, could you uh, share with us a little bit about the, the plans for uh, the landscaping or uh, privacy fence or whatever between uh, the church parking lot and uh, the pool, if, if you could? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, at this point, I'd probably keep um, the, the pool fence, the fence around the pool that's required, um, like an aluminum style uh, black painted fence. Um, and then I'm kind of on, uh, in between doing, um, I'd probably do a wood fence on the property line um, between the church lot and uh, and my property line there. So, so that's what I have. But I, some of these ideas are are just kind of mine. I'm waiting to see what the landscape architect comes back with. Um, but she knows that I want to fence along that that section there, and then obviously around the pool. So. So you're thinking of a fence up by the tree line and one as well as one around the pool? Correct, yeah. Okay. Does that answer your question, Joe? Yes, it does. Thank Anyone you. Else have any questions? No, I'm good. Um, can I open this up to the public, Mr. Dickover? Does yes. From the public have a comment or question on this uh, application?
Do I have a motion to uh, close public hearing for Mr. McGinley's application? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Andrew, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Madam uh, Chair, just if you would have the record reflect that uh, the chat feature of the Facebook showed no members of the public, nor did the, fat, uh, the, the uh, chat feature for your Zoom website show any members of the public contributing. Okay. Yes, I, I didn't know I needed to say that. I just waited. Sorry about that. Um, all right. So, Mr. McGinley, we've closed the public hearing, which means that um, at the end of this meeting, we will render a decision. You're welcome to stay, or you can call the building department tomorrow morning and find out what the decision um, was. Sure. Do you mind if I put you on mute? And no, not at all. Okay. No, you're absolutely welcome to stay. <laughs> all right. Great. Thank you. All righty. Thank you. Okay, next public hearing is Falkowitz, continuation of a public hearing for an area variance per denial of building permit to permit a proposed garage addition to an existing single family dwelling, family dwelling, whoops, located in the active adult section of Woodbury Junction subdivision in which proposed addition will leave a lot coverage of 36.8%, 4,204 square feet, whereas pursuant to section 310-36D1, B6, a maximum lot coverage of 35%, 4,000 square feet is required. Said property is located in the R1A um, Senior Housing Active Adult Zoning District. 33 State and Fairway in Highland Mills is known to the Village of Woodbury tax maps as section 254, block two, lot 82. Uh, is the applicant present? Oh, uh, yes. Oh, okay, I see. Look let me get this here. Okay. So um, the variance is basically for a 1.8% increase in the lot coverage. Um, it, it appears that the setbacks and all the other things would be met. Um, we kept this open for a 239 determination. Once again, it's local determination. Uh, county dated there. Um, there's, oh no, we didn't get a 239 on that one. We don't need one. Sorry about that. Um, all right. So, how do you say your last name? Nimatko? Yes. Oh. I thank you for that very much. <laughs> I've gotten that many various versions. I'm sure. <laughs> I have I to say, say thank you. Um, so, you followed up with a, a note uh, answering some of the questions that the board had at the last meeting. And uh, these are the answers. Um, Mr. Falkowitz says, has been living in the house. Um, yes. The building permit was issued um, for this May 26, 2020. Um, the work in the house is substantially complete with the finishes remaining and building inspections are up to date. The CO has not been issued since the contractor is not ready for the final inspection. And so we're waiting on that. We also um, received today a, um, a letter from uh, Mrs. Here it is, Helen Fries Callanan. Um, basically um, saying her concern, she has concerns about the, uh, the size, the living space of the house, but this really has nothing to do with the garage application. Um, she feels that it's a, an excessive, uh, square footage that is there now and it might exceed the size that's allowed. Um, and she said there were no drawings as to where the garage will be built. I guess um, applicants can go online and look at the uh, documents to see what they what's what's being uh, asked for in each application. We didn't we don't show them on the zoom uh, mostly because it's very difficult to hold things up and have everybody see. Um, she is neither for or against the garage addition as long as it's visually pleasing and conforms with the community guidelines. And the uh, HOA has basically said that they're just dealing with the exterior. If the zoning board approves it, they'll deal with the rest. Um, does the board have any more questions for this applicant? Yeah, I don't think there's a restriction. I don't think there's anything about house sizes in, in 
that whole development? I don't know. N not, but, not a specific size. Of course, every house has to meet the zoning code. So a lot of area coverage, the setbacks and everything and else. 55 and older. What's that? And yeah. 55 and older. Right. Yeah, they're calling it active adult. Um, anybody else have any questions for the applicant? I think the letter, uh, similar to last month, Mr. Joe's Lada, states more the fact that there was already a two car garage. Right, which they, yes, they converted that as well as a basement, which added to the total living space of the house. And that seems to be a concern as far as the um, amount of people living in the home. But we're not here to decide how many people can live in a home, you know, in a senior housing district. There's, I, I don't believe there's any code that says, you know, you're limited to X amount of people in a house. I know there's an age restriction there, but that's not the zoning board's um, prerogative to deal with that. Thank you. Anyone else from the board have questions or comments before I open this up to the public? No, I'm good. When the two car garage was tra tra transformed into living space, right? were you aware that you were gonna request a, a, a variance to build a, an additional garage to what was already there? No, I was not. Were you involved with the project at that time? Yes. Is that it, Andrew? You got your in? Okay. Yep. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak to this application? Let the record reflect that there's no one here to speak to the uh, Falkowitz application. Um, does the board have any issue with closing the public hearing? I'll make a motion we close the public hearing. Do I have a second? I second that motion, please. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I was um, unanimous, Jess. Thank you. All right. Um, so we once should. again, we, at the end of the meeting, uh, we will render a decision. And you're welcome to stay, or you can call the building department in the morning and see what the decision is. I'll, I'll, I'll stay. OK. You could leave. I mean, you don't you don't need to tell me what you're going to do. <laughs> After you pronounce my last name correctly, I'm compelled to say. <laughs> Must come from my teaching days where I had names that I never dreamed I'd see. <laughs> okay. So Madam, Madam, Madam Chair, uh, again, sorry to interrupt, but before you move on, just let your record reflect that there's no participants from the members of the public on either of the chat platforms available, Facebook and the Zoom website. Oh, okay. I, I thought I said that. Whoops. Okay. All right. Uh, next uh, application is Velasca DeVito, continuation of public hearing for an area variance to permit the proposed construction of a 22 by 30 foot addition and 10 foot, 15 foot sunroom, 10 by 15 foot sunroom, leaving a side yard of 10 feet, whereas pursuant to section 310-6B and 310-7 district regulations, a 30 foot side yard is required. Said property is located in the R1A zoning district at 29 Tyros Avenue in Highland Mills and is known on the Village of Woodbury tax maps as section 235, block two, lot one. Is the applicant present? I'm looking at pictures here. Oh, I see somebody waving. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Mrs. DeVito, is that you? You're, you're muted. Could you unmute your microphone? There we go. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, so basically what you want to do is add an addition to the house yes. on the side, on the driveway side, and you're here for a variance because it would, it's not within the uh, setback requirements, correct? Correct, yes. And we, um, we did file a 239 because the back of your property um, adjoins 105, County Route 105, and it was deemed local determination. Once again, it was um, received on the 22nd of December and dated the 16th of December of 2020. Um, so you stated basically that these are your parents, correct? Correct. That, that are eight, who are 88 years old, they have mobility issues and they're living in a house and they need really somebody to watch over them. And Yes, you know. and need to 
to be on one floor. And what, what you plan to do is, is put um, living space um, on that ground floor because they cannot do the steps. Correct. And, um, but no kitchen or stove area, whatever. No, no stove, no. Will it be like a refrigerator or whatever? Is there? Yeah, refrigerator, um, but no cooktop, no stove, no ovens. Okay. So I, I can't even put that in there because she's starting to um, have a little bit of dementia, Alzheimer's. So, yeah. Um, so the, the layout, I, you sent to <coughs> today two things. One was, uh, I guess it was the listing for the home. Yeah, showing, yeah. Um, was that, that it, it's dated 2003? Yeah. Um, is that when you purchased the home? Correct. Okay. And, and the other picture was to show like where the septic is right in the middle. Kind what of right I there. got is, is a picture of a bedroom and a picture of the back of the house. Back of the house. I just wanted to show you guys where the, the septic, um, why we couldn't put it in the backyard. <coughs> Somebody okay. asked yeah. why we couldn't go up the back of the house yeah yeah i did i asked that yeah right from yeah the back of the house that's what it showed you that sunroom that was there when we purchased the house to the septic is only 15 foot away okay and then somebody made a comment that it was always a two-car garage our house but that the paperwork that diane sent you shows you that it was always a four bedroom four bedroom house three upstairs and one downstairs um that's why she wanted to show you that from the listing. So how how will the parents get to the kitchen? Is the kitchen on the the kitchen's on your um the, the like the main floor? You'd have to bring the food down. Well, you mean as far as well, I mean they'll have a refrigerator and you know, but as far as like hot meals and things, right? I would bring it down to them. Oh, so they're not going to be coming upstairs at all? No, just I mean here and there like they you know not on an everyday basis no her, her father can't go down he goes down backwards backwards because he can't walk forward down the stairs you gotta go down backwards pull two railings you know nice and easy one step at a time plus you know the thing with the kitchen is we can't put a kitchen in for her mother because if she leaves the stove on which she's done before with a you know a dry pan it's gonna start a fire yeah, no, I, I understand that. I dealt with that with a mother-in-law at one point also. Mm -hmm. um, anybody from the board have any um, questions, comments on this application? Well, the only thing I would see here, you know, I know that the, the applicant said that the septic is 15 feet, but the plat plan says it's 30 feet. I think maybe the addition that was put on Lessen the no, bridge. that's got nothing to do with the septic. No, but it has distance to do with the, I don't know. Which yeah, is, sure it does. It, it, the, the original back of the house, before before the, the previous owners would have put the septic, um, the addition on the sunroom, then you would you had you would have had your 30 feet. So they put on a 15-foot sunroom on the house before we purchased it. So that must be the original. Uh, yeah, but the septic line is in the middle of the house. Not where the sunroom is. In, in the, foot, in the deck and the at the edge of the deck, sunroom. It's exactly at the edge of that the, the original deck of the house. So if you walk up that deck onto the grass, you would land right into the septic. Well, onto the grass above it. Oh, so, I see, so the corner of the sunroom is is basically you draw a line from the corner, 15 feet out, that would be the septic. Correct. Okay. How many feet? 15. 15 feet. And that's the way we purchased the house. That sunroom is what you're talking about with the, uh, the second story with the white door and the uh, beige uh, railing around it? Yeah. And then there's a little deck off of it. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 The, the brown railing. The brown the, railing. Yeah, there's the deck, and then behind that is the sunroom. So you know exactly where it is. 
you see that window underneath the first, uh, the second column towards the left, that window, the, the double um, casement window underneath the, the porch in the sunroom, if you put your back to it, you walk straight out, that's in line with the septic. Okay. Because that is actually the laundry room where it comes in. So that's, you walk out, put your back against that window and you walk out 30 feet from under the house. Okay, you'll get 15 feet to the deck and then another 15 feet, and you'll be on top of the septic. Right, so, so you could go 15 feet out from the back of your house without bothering the septic, is that correct? From uh, the middle of your house. You have, a pool on the left, you have a pool on the left side of it now, and this deck right, that deck right there was closed in to an addition already. That was, that's already closed in. These are all pictures from we bought the house. But no, you can't go out 15 feet because you have the tank there. You can't, if you do a foundation or any footing, you're going to put print against the tank. The tank's on the ground. That's like, you couldn't put, you couldn't put an above ground pool or an in-ground pool certain amount of feet next to the tank because of the pressure. Is the, the deck that was made into an enclosed area, is that also on stilts? Yes. Okay. Right, but that's a small area. You'll need a lot more and you'll have to put a foundation for, you know. Right, no, I was just curious as far as the, the foundation. So there's no, it's a, it's a second story addition. There, oh, the part is that's on, the, on yes. that picture, yes. Okay. Um, is there any reason you didn't give a, a map of the the exterior elevation? Because the, the building department said you didn't need to do, give any floor plans, but um, they told we did everything wait, they asked is, us to do. What before. is uh, what is that? They told us just turn in the paperwork, uh, fill out for a building permit, and wait until see if we get approved or we don't get approved to send everything in. Oh, because uh, Mr. Thomas Berger said that um, you were they asked you to re, um, submit an elevation plan because of the hill that you're on? Oops, no, they never asked me that. Like, as a matter of fact, I spoke to him the other day as well. You call that. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else from the board have any questions, concerns? Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Go ahead, Jeff. Um, I know uh, you spoke about this uh, last meeting, but since we just spoke of elevation, I was wondering if you would, um, entertain the suggestion that maybe you lose that second floor so that there isn't so much elevation that's kind of towering over some of the houses or the house at least that's downhill from you a bit. Uh, it was said um, that's not space that you were going to use for um, uh, Ms. Ms. Flasco DeVito's uh, parents, but that her mom was kind of keen on it, but um, it, it would bring the, the footage down quite a bit uh, from uh, around 1,470 to below 1,000, and it, it wouldn't be as high uh, an addition. It's right. Um, that, you know, well, it could go. So the thing is this. I was told I could actually, if I couldn't go out, I would, I would be able to add a level, which would be make my house even higher than everybody else's house in the neighborhood. And I don't need a variance for it. But then I end up blocking my other neighbor's view to the right of my house looking at it. If I did go out the side and we did add a second level, I'll be at the same elevation as my house is now. It's not going to be any, it's, it's just extended from side to side. The height's not getting it. I'm not going any taller. It's going to be the same height that we are at now. Well, it's, it's, I don't disagree with that uh, premise, Mr. DeVito. It's just the fact that it, it's moving that height uh, 20 feet closer uh, right. than it was. Uh, it's a visual thing. Right. I understand. I can't, I mean, this is what my father in law is asking for, my mother in law. I, I don't know. I mean, this is their, their wishes. They don't want it to look like it's an apartment. You know, they're going from a, a large bi level. 
to to a smaller apartment. Maybe it's a visual thing for them that they want this. I mean, to me, I got to furnish another room. You know, at this point, it is what it is. I'll do what it takes for my in-laws. But this is what my mother-in-law and father-in-law, this is what their wishes are. This same thing with the sunroom. You know, right now, she's insisting on, on, on adding a sunroom so she could sit out back. Maybe in two months from now, when we build it or whatever we do, she might not even remember she wanted the sunroom, you know? But right now, as of now, this is their wishes. Anyone else on the board have any comments or questions? Um, you were saying that you could go higher without, you were told by somebody that you could go higher did I understand that correctly? Yeah, I could actually add another level on top of my house with a regular building permit. But then it then it totally changes my whole entire house. And I got to make everything handicap accessible for my in-laws. You know, then I'd have to put ramps and I'd have to change change the whole foot, you know, footprint of my house, which we can't afford to do that. Whether I'm in the business or not, it's, it's going to be way too much money. Yeah. Anyone else have any comments or questions before I open it up to the public? Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak to this application? No? Okay, let the record reflect that no one um, on the Zoom chat, is that what you call it? Uh, wishes to speak to the application. And Mr. Egan, I guess there's no one in the waiting room or wherever who has mentioned anything. Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, does the board feel they have enough information to close the public hearing? I just have one more thing and I, I'm sorry, is there a way, because I'm just trying to understand that the back that's closed in and what we're, what we're being told is that the uh, the survey is old and that whole length of the back of the house has been closed in. Uh, is there a way that we can get a, a, a recent, a more recent survey that would show the actual, the distances there? I mean, uh, this decision, uh, you know, is, is going to have an impact for quite a long time. And should we at least have more accurate, a more accurate survey uh, to be able to distinguish exactly what those lines are. How would the back of the house help you with the side of the house addition, Andrew? What are you thinking? Uh, I, I, my, I'm thinking if there's, a different, if there's another way to do it, to add the same square footage off the back of the house uh, without imp impacting the septic, then that's something that we should or if that's not the case, uh, then we it's should- It's not even possible. It's not even possible for a retaining wall beyond that. So you would never you would never make the the length. Like if I added, I know what you're saying, if I added the 22 foot straight out, you're talking about go 22 foot out, correct? And then carry- no, um, you, can, you, can go, you can go 10 feet out uh, or, or, you know, go 10 feet out, but go the-, the the length, Again, you'll be, the width you'll of the house. You'll be on top of my septic, and then you're going to start getting into my leach fields. That that's impossible to do. There's there's no way to do that. I'd have to rip my leach fields up and my sept and my septic tank out. There's no way I could do that. Are the leach fields past the septic? Yeah, they just passed it. You have a distribution box. Then then my hill starts dropping straight down to 105. It's a drastic drop. <laughs> Then answer your question, Andrew. You think? Well, the leach well, fields. Answer your question, but give you more information. <laughs> the leach um, fields have got to be at least fifty feet below the septic. Well, yeah, I told the back drops straight down. We get a drastic drop. Right after that, my my backyard goes straight down. You look at one hundred and five. You look up at my house. There's a huge hill. Yeah. Oh, so that's where it drops. Uh, 
Anyone else? Does uh, anyone feel we have enough information now to close the public hearing? I feel we're good. You want to make a motion, Joe? I make a motion that we close the public hearing. Do I have a second? Greg seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, so, Mr. Oh, Mr. Oh, Mr. we are uh, closing. The public hearing is closed. So, at the end of this meeting, um, we will discuss it, render a decision, and you're welcome to stay to hear the discussion. Or you can call the building department tomorrow and watch it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, Fidelity Holdings has withdrawn their application. We did that in the beginning. So we're up to letter E. Um, Agnello, hope I said that right. Public hearing for an area variance to permit the demolition and reconstruction of a detached garage accessory structure leaving a 0 0.3 foot side yard setback, whereas pursuant to section 310-6B, 310-12C3, a minimum setback of six feet is required. Said property is located in the R 0.25A zoning district at 10 Ford Avenue in Highland Mills and is known on the village of Ta Woodbury tax maps as section 220 block five, lot 31. Um, is the applicant present? I am, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you? <laughs> you must have just shown your picture because <laughs> you threw me off. Um, okay, so uh, really what you're asking for is um, a variance to demolish the, the existing garage, rebuild um, on the same foundation, same same size, same footprint. Um, Everything's the same. It's uh, nothing changes size wise. It's just uh, it's not currently safe to put anything in. So it needs to be demolished. Um, yeah, I agree it, with that. Is the um, when was your house built? Do you know? Oh my God, hundred years ago. Yeah, yeah, it was built in the uh, eight, eighteen hundreds. Yeah. yeah. So I imagine I don't know when the garage was built, but it's definitely um, pre-existing, non-conforming. Two years later. Garage on the two years ago. Oh, get <laughs> out of here, Craig. Two, two years later. <laughs> oh wow, two years later. <laughs> okay. Um, so the height would be the same also? Um, the height, I think, would be whatever the, it, it's shorter than the required height is now. So it would just be raised to whatever the standard height is for, it's it's in the plans, whatever it was, but it would just be raised up. I think it's like a foot or something like that. It's nothing, uh, okay. nothing crazy. And is it unsafe because it's just structurally falling apart or? Correct, yeah. It's um, there's holes in the side of it that's kind of leaning to one side, so I, I can't oh, okay. I can't put anything yeah. in. Um, when you would you consider it's a two car garage now, or it has one big door, but it looks like it's two car at least two car garage, yes or no? I would say so, yeah. It's yeah. um, the in the plans, I have it doing one big door again, but it's it's probably the size of a two car garage, yeah. But yet you you wouldn't consider making it a one car garage by moving over the side next to the property line, would you? Even if I made it a one car garage, I, I think I would still be. Uh, if I made it a one car garage, my driveway would still be right on the property line, and it would be my garage would be like in the middle of my yard, pretty much my backyard. No, no, I don't want you to move the whole thing over. I'm just saying. Uh, keep the left side where it is and just move the right side over. In other words, squeeze the garage to make it smaller so that it's further from the property line. I'm just asking if that's something you could, would consider. I don't think it's a full two car garage. The width of the garage is 19 feet. So I, I it would be very, very narrow for if I tried to make it a one car, I don't, I don't think it would work. Um, I would like to keep it the same size that it is just because I, I, I do have two cars and I, I have a ton of, I have a one year old and I have another one on the way and I have a ton of baby stuff that I'd like to try and keep in there. Um, but yeah, I, I'd like to try and keep it how, how it is. Uh, I would understand if there was someone like actually living next to me that it affected the, the property line. But um, if at all possible, I'd like to keep it the same size that it is. 
Yeah, yeah there's just a lot next to you. Yeah, that's been there forever. Yeah, it's just an empty lot. I've tried to contact the owner a hundred times. I think they live on the other side of the country. I, I'm never able to get in touch with them. So it's, it's just an empty lot next to me. Would you, um, when you put up the garage, would you make it architecturally similar to the house? So it looks like it matches? It is going to be, yeah. It's going to be the same siding, same color uh, roof and everything like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't, I didn't see a 239. Did anybody else see that there was a 239 cent for this? That's what I'm just looking for right now. Yeah, um, I don't know how far they are. He is from 32. Um, not, not very. So it would require a 230. Probably requires, yeah. A 230. I don't see it in the packet that we, we had. Either. Yeah, I don't either. Um, um, Madam Chairperson? Yes. It was sent in, but we didn't get the reply back. Oh, that's you what you're asking? The, yes, that's what I'm asking. I don't see a, a, I didn't get a paper. Oh, yes, I did. It's stuck here. It's stuck to the back of this. <laughs> okay, it was sent in on, uh, where's the date on this? December 31st. So we have till the end of the month. Okay. Um, we need to hear from the county when you have um, something within 500 feet of a county road or state road, um, whether it would have an adverse effect or whatever. What was that? Can we go over the questions tonight and instead of putting everything off for another month? I think, well, we've done that before, um, Mr. Deco, we would, if, if we close public, if we close the public hearing or we cannot close the public hearing due to you the would. 239, but draw a draft decision based on what we would discuss. You can certainly go over the five factors. You cannot close the public hearing nor make a decision this evening. Okay. But we could go over the five questions. Um, it's possible that you could draw a draft decision based on what, how we answer the five questions. We, you, you could make that directive, yes. Um, you know, the only issue there is be careful in case the county does come back with some sort of recommendation. You'd then have to review the five factors, again, taking into account the county's uh, input. Okay. Well, I can't imagine the county having a problem with taking down one garage and putting the same thing back again. But you never if, know, Kevin. Yeah, and well, if we have, know, but <laughs> if we have to wait anyway, Kevin, right? <laughs> but no, I but then if the, you, the if you point, hold off another, then you got a whole other month. Right. I yeah. think we'll, we we did this with several uh, in December, from November to yes. December, uh, at least two of them, as I recall. So I would I would agree with Kevin that um, in this particular case, I'd say it's worth the risk of preparing a decision consistent with our deliberations um, and having it ready for the next meeting expecting the county to come back with a local determination. I agree with that. Anyone on the board have a problem with that? I agree with that. I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm good. You know me. <laughs> okay. It's good. Um, so um, I make a motion that we keep the public hearing open until next month. So we await the county's 239 report. Second. Um, seconds it. Was there anybody okay. from the... Uh, Wait a minute, wait a minute, Kevin. All in favor? Aye. 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 But I think what Kevin was going to ask is, oh. is there anybody, we didn't actually oh. open, we didn't actually oh. open a public hearing to That's continue. True. Yes, true. I'm sorry. You're right. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to uh, comment on this application? Phew. <laughs> Let the record reflect that no one from the public wishes to speak. It's the first act, Jess. <laughs> just pretend there was temporal distortion <laughs> okay um not bad so do we go over those five questions now mr dick over or do we wait till um when uh, we you, you can do them now if you wish um unless you want to go back to your first item on your agenda and do it in the same order that's totally up to you what would the board prefer to do uh, I would prefer to do the order that we um, had the agenda in. Okay. All right. So um, what we'll do, Mr. Agnello, is um, we're keeping the public hearing open. However, we will discuss your application and depending on our feelings at the time, <laughs> how we answer the five questions, um, we'll have our attorney draw up a decision based
based on those answers and you're willing to stay, you know, you, you're willing, you know, you can stay or you can leave and call and see, you know, what the draft decision might be. Yeah, me. Okay. And then when, when would I call for that? Tomorrow morning, building department. Okay. No. But, All right. but so just Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I, I don't think there will be any record of an actual draft decision because we would be instructing council to draft said decision consistent with our discussion. So I'm not sure that there's anything for Mr. Nello to call about. Yeah, but you'll get it on Facebook. Um, Mr. Dickover, you know, is that correct? Uh, that's been your motion in the past to direct council to prepare a decision consistent with the board's findings of this evening. If I would do that, you would then undertake or take up that resolution next month and that would be your decision. Uh, if Mr. Agnello wants to stand by and watch the board's uh, discussion, he certainly is welcome to do that. It may give him some indication in which way the board is going with respect to your decision. But there won't be a decision tonight. Right. There's nothing to call to the building yeah, department. You're right. You're right. Because it's it's based on the we're waiting for that 239. He can pick that up on Facebook tomorrow. Yeah. Or There's, your discussion. Yeah. So, Mr. Agnello, you're welcome to stay. We enjoy your presence. And if you'd like to, yeah. please do. But you can also feel free to move on to other things you might have for the evening and uh, pick it up on Facebook tomorrow or the day after. OK, so basically, I'm just waiting on to hear back from the county. Is that what? Correct. Yes. We cannot yeah. make a final decision until the county returns their de decision on the 239 referral. Okay, and they have that. They have I, I submitted everything correctly and everything like that. Yes, everything okay. is in. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate All it. Right. Have, have a good, good night. night. Yes. You too. Um, we do not have a building inspector's report, and so we will now do our um, deliberations on the closed public hearings as well as the one that we left open. So first on the agenda would be the McKinley application for the pool in the side yard. And we'll go over the five questions. Uh, the first question, will the granting of this variance produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or create detriment to nearby properties? The applicant says no. The pool is aesthetically pleasing and in ground. Trees lining the property will obscure most of the view from the outside of the property line. I'm having a hard time with the handwriting or maybe it's my eyes. Um, <laughs> something landscape so finish finish finish, uh, finish landscape and landscape will be completed as well um so the question is will this have an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood i don't think or so detriment um i sort of agree with that so you're agreeing with the applicant yeah i don't think it's going to change the uh i don't either character of the property i don't either Anybody have anything to say on that? Other than we agree with the applicant? Does anyone disagree? I have just one slight reservation about the, the church parking lot. And uh, I, I would like very much to see a, a privacy wall put in there. Uh, I don't know if we can ask that as a condition, but um, that is something that I'd like to see. You know, I don't know that it would be fair to ask that if you pull into that church parking lot, there's, you know, houses on the right, there's houses on the left, his house, you know, basically directly in front. Um, you can see everything that's going on in the yards there. Um, Got all those pine trees, you really can't see beyond. It's hard, you know, um, he would probably want the privacy, you know, as far as, you know, so that he could enjoy the pool without people peeking in. But I don't know that we could require it, that our variance is for a side yard pool not whether it has privacy issues or not. Anyone else? So uh, we agree I, with the applicant. I'll, I'll just say that uh, I had a, a momentary audio issue. Um, I believe that the applicant may be back before us with a variance for a higher than oh, code stop. fence. Excuse me. A, a higher than code fence. Uh, because side yards four foot and i suspect that he will be before us looking for something higher um, which is probably what joe is getting at and and so uh, just an indication i think that that will be happening just a guess um 
I thought Joe was referring to the fence along the tree line. And you're referring to the fence along the driveway side or, or around the whole pool? It's still, it's still the side yard. Right, right. Right, but he is going to put a, a wooden he's gonna fence. Put a, well, he's, he's going to put a four-foot fence. The parking lot, so that, that, that basically covers that. So is that the side yard or the rear yard? No, it's, just, it's, it's all side yard. Okay. It will be the side facing the, the parking lot. <laughs> so the parking lot. That's going to be wood. So my point, Kevin, is that I suspect. I, I agree with you, Craig. Okay. Okay. So you're saying the same thing. Yeah, I, I agree. I think he's going to go for a six foot fence too, but that's a later time. Right. That's that's what I'm saying. That's down the road. Yeah. That would be another application. Well, but the reason I bring it up is because I think it addresses Joe's comment. All righty, so we agree with the applicant on number one, that it will not provide produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or be a detriment. I agree. I agree. All righty. Number two, can the benefit you seek be achieved by some other feasible method other than the variance? Applicant says no. Um, wow. You want me to read it? I, can, I, I have pretty good interpretation. Se <laughs> se secondary to existing grade access points and lot lines, placement of the new pool is in the rear yard would require substantial and cost pro prohibitive, um, I believe that's change. Means, I think uh, it says mean, means, cost means, prohibitive means for installation. Means for installation. Yes. I mean, you look at the front yard. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite steep. The backyard, the property line is, is too close. There's, there's too much stuff. There's a garage there. There's, there's all kinds of tree. There's all kinds of stuff there. So there's also the sewer hookup comes in uh, uh, down the driveway and it, it would be kind of in the way of anything that you wanted to do there, yeah. too, I believe. So it's really the only place he could do it. And when we asked him if he would rotate the pool, you know, to make it um, the long side perpendicular to the, I uh, mean, parallel to the house, he was concerned about the roots of the trees. And if you look, there's a tree you know, near the pool and then right there's there. those big trees by the, by the hill there. So I agree that yeah, there I think is no other alternative for this pool. Everyone agree with that? Yeah, yes. Okay, number three, how substantial is the variance that you are requesting? Minimal um, regarding placement of the pool in the side yard. Um, it's a side yard pool. It's, I mean, he's not asking for He's asking more. It's the placement. The pool itself is not the issue. It's the it's the placement of the pool. Um, I don't have a problem with it being in the side yard. I don't think it's a, a, a huge uh, request. I don't either. I'm fine. I agree. Great. We agree with the applicant that it's a minimal. Yeah. Okay. Number four. Will the granting of the variance have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions <laughs> in the neighborhood or district? Um, he says, no, a salt or mineral chlorine generator will be used with energy efficiency, heat pump, uh, water consumption will be minimized with the use of a fiberglass pool. Um, I'm not sure. It's not going to have any <laughs> adverse effect. On no, I don't think so. I'm just curious how that, you know, the, that fact that it's a fiberglass pool, I guess pouring things into the ground or something. I imagine it's like one of those prefab fiberglass pools. <coughs> oh, yeah, the they're bring it in a big yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think the point is that it, rather than uh, uh, some of the pools that are lined and you have leaks in the liner, this would be solid. So it's not likely was, to have a leaking, a leaching effect. Right. Okay, I agree that there really doesn't seem to be any impact on the physical or environmental conditions. I, I agree. Everyone disagree? Anyone disagree? Okay. Number Madam Chair, just on that one, um, in the past, you've discussed pools and whether it's in the rear yard, the side yard, or even the front yard, the same amount of noise is usually generated by these. And so with respect to adverse environmental impacts on the neighborhood, the same impacts would be present if the pool were in the rear of, of the property as it would be in the side oh, yard. Yeah. Definitely, especially in this location, if you look at it, where it is with the driveway there. 
Number five, is the alleged difficulty self-created? Applicant says no, the house and landscape grade with surrounding properties has been established for over a hundred years. Well, technically I guess it is self-created because he wants pool, <laughs> 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 you know, um, but that doesn't uh, preclude us from approving it if, if need be. Um, I personally do not have a problem with putting uh, Mr. McGinley's pool in the side yard. Um, do I have a motion? To... I'll make that motion that we, we grant him the variance to install the pool in the side yard. Right. Uh, have... Just before you move that, really, the motion at this point should be to direct council to prepare a decision consistent with the board's finding this evening so that you'll have it in writing next month for your deliberations and you can then adopt it that, e that, that evening. Uh, before you do that, also, just to, for your records, this is a uh, board is declared itself to be lead agency for secret purposes, and this is a type two action Correct. that it seeks an area variance for a one or two family dwelling. So back to your motion. Like cool. I was <laughs> 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 well, How about our attorney puts that on a tape for us and we can, just have <laughs> and then we can just have to hit play. <laughs> Whatever he said. Would you like to hear that? Played, would you like to hear that played again? No. <laughs> Okay. I'll, I'll so do it for the next one. Okay. There you go. So you want to reword your, your uh, motion, Kevin, or you want to say, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion to, for what he I'll said. make a motion to whatever the attorney recommended. To, uh, to make sure for, draft for a favorable <laughs> decision. Consistent with the thought, with the discussion that we had this evening. Correct. Okay. Is that, is that better, Mr. Dickover? That's close enough. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll second that motion. Joe, I'm sorry. Joe seconded that. Thank you. All right. I'm going to do a roll call on this. Um, so, Craig, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Kevin? Aye. Andrew? Aye. And Joe? Aye. And I vote aye. So, Mr. McGinley, um, you have a positive decision. Um, it really doesn't take effect until next month when we um, read the decision and vote on the actual decision. So, um, no construction can start till till then. I guess he left. No, no. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. And, and I'm sure I will be back for some additional <laughs> to the fence, as was alluded to. So <laughs> all righty. Thank you guys. Have a good evening. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye now. Okay, next on the agenda is Falkowitz. This is for the uh, the garage. This is, um, let me find my paperwork here. There we go. Um, people who wrote letters seem more concerned about the size of the home and the number of, uh, number of residents living there, but that really has nothing to do with adding a single car garage. So we cannot address those issues. Um, so we'll go over the five questions. Will the granting of this variance produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or create a detriment to nearby properties? Applicant says no. The granting of this variance will allow a garage addition for the existing single family house, a characteristic that most nearby houses already possess. The garage design will be context contextual with the surrounding residential neighborhood. Um, I agree that it's not going to produce an undesirable change, but uh, the part that says that most nearby houses already possess, well, they did already possess a garage and they made it into a dining area. So now they're adding another garage. Um, but doesn't produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. So that's what we're I agree. looking at. I agree. Everyone, uh, anyone disagree with that? Okay, did, all righty. Number two, can the benefit you seek be achieved by some other feasible method other than the variance? Uh, applicant says the benefit that is sought cannot be achieved because the request is for an enclosed space to house one car and that results in an increase in lot coverage. Um, yeah, basically. Um, and it's not a significant one either. Anybody disagree with the applicant on that one? No, I'm good with that. Okay, anybody else disagree? No? Okay, number three. 
How substantial is the variance that you are requesting? The variance is very small in nature. The garage addition results in a lot coverage increase of about 2% over the required limit. In return, it provides a substantial benefit for the lot senior residents who have trouble using their vehicle in inclement weather. Um, I agree, it's not a substantial uh, lot coverage. All the setbacks and, I'm sorry, what, Andrew? I was just saying that it's not a substantial variance, but uh, based on the comments, there was already a two car garage there yeah. with senior residents. So they could have kept the one girl, you know, part of it. I'm just saying with regards well, I, to the yes. applicants, the applicants uh, interpretation. Right, I, I agree with you on that. But the request for a one car garage is what we're looking at. So is that a substantial request? No. With the 1.8% in So everyone agrees with the applicant on that one? Okay. Number four, will the granting of the variance have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district? Um, applicant says the proposed action has no adverse impact on the neighborhood because it improves the land value of the property without adding a substantial amount of impervious or building area and is contextual in design with the residential neighborhood. Um, I drove by it and looked at the map and whatever. It doesn't appear to me that it's going to have any adverse effect on the neighborhood. I don't think so either. Anyone else have a differing opinion? But I am glad they typed this for you, Karen. Me too. <laughs> I should make that a prerequisite from now on. There you go. <laughs> And I would add that the HOA will make sure that the, the materials being used are consistent with the existing home as well as the right. neighborhood as well. So they have less leeway to be different um, in this context. I agree. And the last question, is the alleged difficulty self-created? Um, this difficulty is self-created and asking to apply for an improvement that requires an area variance due to lot coverage. Uh, this request is to improve the quality of life of the property's residents while altering a minor area of a mostly impervious area. Um, basically, the answer is yes. <laughs> and it we was agree with, we, and, we and agree the, with the applicant. He, he said it was. Yes, he did. <laughs> okay, Greg, you're up. We agree with the applicant. <laughs> okay, Greg, would you like to make a motion? I would like to make a motion. Oh, wait a minute. We probably have we, to... Uh, well, so the yeah, first, first motion would be that we declare ourselves lead agency right. for SECRA and declare this a type two uh, application. Yes. And now you can make your um, motion. Well, let, let's, that, that was a motion. So that's the first motion. I'll second it. Wait. Oh, we vote on type two and- You and, should. Okay. How do we vote on being lead agency and declaring this a type two application? Second. Aye. 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 That's unanimous, Jess. All right, second part, Craig. I uh, make a motion that we request council to prepare a decision consistent with the discussions and deliberations we've just undertaken for further deliberation and decision at our next meeting. Why do we have to do further deliberation? basically none. So he just has to draw up a decision consistent with our favorable, recommendation. favorable decision consistent with the discussion that we had this evening. Correct. Okay. <laughs> I'll second uh, Craig's motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. How do we do, Mr. Dickover? Close enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that no more. It's going to have to be Craig from now on. And now uh, next time, next, next time is Andrew. I'll try one. I'll get the next one. Okay. All right. So Mr. Falkowitz is getting his. Um, we have to take a vote on that now. You have to vote. We just did. We, just did. No, we, we, we just did? voted. Okay. No, we need a roll call. Yeah. Right. Oh, on the, on the motion. Okay. So all in favor of granting this uh, a favorable decision based on the discussion that we had this evening. How do you vote, um, Joe? Or I. Um, Kevin? Aye. Greg? Aye. Andrew? Aye. And I vote aye. Okay. So now it's official. Okay. 
no construction till at least next month because we have to uh, vote on that decision. All right. All right. Let's see. All right. Next decision, um, Thalaska DeVito. This is for the addition to the home and the side, uh, the sunroom in the back. Okay, question uh, one. Will the granting of this variance produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or create a detriment to nearby properties? The applicant says it will not produce an undesirable change to the neighborhood um, when converted. Produce. I'm sorry. When completed. Oh, completed, oh, sorry. sorry. This one isn't typed. <laughs> when completed. <laughs> um, Looks like continue in the conformity with the existing the, home. Conformity with the existing home. Um, I, I have a problem with it because they are on a hill and the top part, they'll be peeking right over. I don't know, to me that, that does seem a little bit detrimental to nearby properties. What does everyone else think? Madam Chair, I would agree. In addition to that, um, going out uh, so close to the edge of the property line uh, being higher up on that elevation as well uh, and, and without specific uh, drawings to determine what that elevation really looks like, I, I would agree with you. Anyone else have anything to say on that? I, I disagree as well, Madam Chairperson. Um, with me or with the applicant? I disagree with the, the applicant. Uh, uh, that basically is what the can, uh, the thing so far in the discussion was uh, basically I really would like to see at the very least that that was down one story. I, I don't know that we can say something about that. Um, it does say that um, we can grant the minimum variance right. necessary to achieve the results, which the second story would not be a necessary part. But I, I have a problem with that uh, being large and it, it would be uh, a detriment to some of the neighbors, as I see it. You know, I, I agree, Karen. I just I, I think it's too much for that piece of property. Okay. With comparison to all the other houses there, you're going to have a house ten foot off the property line. That's I I. I I would agree that that it would probably be preferable given the elevations that are that are there that it would be preferable if it were one story instead of two. Um, and again, I, I understand that the, the parents um, have a desire for it not to look like a, an add on apartment. Um, but in the context of, of the neighborhood, it, it, that's a tough one. It really is. Um, yeah, I, I'm with, I think Joe brought it up and I, I kind of was thinking the same that a one story might, might be more palatable in the context of the neighborhood than two. Um, so that would, that could be a consideration. Okay. Um, number two, can the benefit you seek be achieved by some other feasible method other than the variance? The applicant says no. The benefit cannot be achieved by some other feasible method. My home is currently occupied by my spouse and three children. Um, I don't know. I, I think there are alternatives. I'm not sure what they all are. Um, I think there are too. You know, I, I know that the applicant wished the, uh, the home, he didn't want to go up because he thought it would you know, on one side of the house or whatever, because he thought it wouldn't look right. But I, I've seen homes where they, they go up on one side and that doesn't look bad at all. Um, so, and the fact, you know, having one, one ground floor, I don't know, I think, I think the uh, possibilities weren't explored. The other, other possibilities weren't explored enough. What does everyone else think? I feel similar to you, Karen. Me, me I, all, I do too. I know uh, 
Kevin had asked, and uh, I believe one other person about, uh, is there any way of working around the septic? It seemingly is not so, um, but um, uh, your suggestion of, of going up uh, is certainly a good one. Or even a less impactful uh, variance like Mr. Brady or Mr. Abrams, a one floor uh, as opposed to a two floor uh, with a smaller layout. Any other comments? Uh, I, ultimately, I think that that I, I'm going to agree with the applicant in this particular context because I don't see how you can avoid a fairly substantial variance, uh, which the primary one of which is the side yard setback. Um, that 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 there's no other way to be achieved unless you go up. Um, and there's significant downsides to going up because at that point, um, while you wouldn't need a variance per se at all, um, you're basically talking about making a substantial portion of the home unlivable for a significant period of time, six weeks at least and probably more than that. So uh, I'm in, in the position where I'm going to agree with the applicant on this one. Okay. Anyone else on that question? Okay. Number three, how substantial is the variance that you are requesting? The applicant says it is not substantial as it will increase the length by 20 feet. Um, that is fairly that substantial. That is, it's, it's a, you know, you're going from, well, the that's length not of the, the house now is 52.2 feet according to the drawing. That'll make it 74.2, it's 43% increase. But the, the context of, of the, the how substantial is the variance is based on the setback question, right? Right. So in that context, it is substantial. Yeah. 10 like feet. 66%. Correct. Yeah. So. Anybody else? OK. Uh, number four, will the granting of the variance have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district? The applicant says no, the granting of the variance will not have an ad adverse effect or impact on the neighborhood. Um, I think it will, to be honest with you. Physical well, maybe, but I don't know about environmental. Right, I think you're, you're referring to question one, Kevin, where I think that there was undesirable on change physical, on the physical or environmental conditions right i just think it's going to have a physical the physical condition of the neighborhood i think it's a you're taking the houses that are all sitting on these half acres or whatever they are and now you got a house almost the whole length of the property i so think that changes the changes the neighborhood Okay. Anyone else have an opinion on that? Joe or Andrew? Greg? Just a little bit that it would create more water for the downhill neighbor. And that does really uh, pitch off towards the neighbor on the left facing the house. Yeah, that's true. He's, he's, he's run off. off. Yeah. Run off, Joe, because of the buildings. Yes. Yeah. Um, wouldn't it run off more to the back than the side? I, I don't know what the pitch is uh, to that degree. Um, the driveway that's there is already paved. So I don't right know. Now it could just left. run right out to the end of the driveway and down the lawn. But now you put a building there. Now you got to send it over to the property line almost. I don't know which way the water would flow. I don't know. I, I, I mean, obviously, some of it would go downhill. To the neighbor, well, I, and some I, would go out the back. It would have to go downhill, Karen. And <laughs> well, it, <laughs> <laughs> you you majored in science, Craig. <laughs> um, I, I would just say that that uh, in the context there, if we're talking about roof runoff and gutters, that um, you know Gary would probably suggest running it to the back of the house so yeah. that it would run downhill. Yeah. Right. So we could agree with the applicant in terms of there is not a significant environmental uh, or physical change to the neighborhood. Uh, I, I do. Think 
I think there is. I think there is. A... You disagree, um, Andrew? I, 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 I think I, I can understand uh, what Mr. Brady's saying. You can uh, manage the environmental effect uh, on that. Uh, the physical is, is definitely something different uh, in terms of the, uh, the overall attributes of the neighborhood. Um, but so I guess I, I, I would uh, agree that with the applicant that there is not going to be a significant environmental or physical uh, change as a result of the variance the way it's interpreted under that question. So are we agreeing or disagreeing with the applicant on number four? I think like Andrew I, and I, I agree with the applicant. I can see my way to agreeing with uh, Craig and Andrew's uh, position on that. Okay. So I guess three of us agree right. with the applicant. Right, that's, yeah. I don't want to speak for you, Kevin, and for you, Karen, but it's okay. Seems no, I, I didn't go any further because it wouldn't matter because three to two is, you know, that's the majority. Gloria, my life. <laughs> Just, uh, Madam, Madam Chair, on these five factors, keep in mind that the board's findings don't have to be unanimous. Oh, right. I know. There can, be yes. there yeah. can be differences of opinion on the five Absolutely. factors, and we will reflect that in your decision. Right. And I think it's it's fair to capture that as part of the minutes that that on this question, we were three to two. Which I guess is basically why I said, said that. <laughs> just, just for the record. Under, so understood speak. for the record, yep. Okay, number five, is the alleged difficulty self-created? Uh, the applicant says no, this request is necessary as it would be the only way to care for my aging parents and maintain my current home. Um, it, it is self-created that you're going to create, you know, I mean, that, that's, you know, mo yeah, most of these things of are self-created, um, but that doesn't preclude. Does anyone disagree with that? I agree with you, Madam Chair. I'm good. Good. All right. So um, do we do, do we? So we have to declare ourselves lead agency and declare us the um, type this a type two action if we approve it. Is that what we do now, Rob? You should do that at this point. Yes. Okay. So do we have to make a motion that we uh, are going to be the lead agency on this? Yes, a motion to and declare it, yourselves lead agency and type and, the uh, application as a type two action. I, I would. I make that uh, motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, and do I'll we make, need? I'll make a motion that the counselor draft <laughs> a decision based on the uh, findings of the vote of this board this evening. Which is yeah. my. Sorry, I... is, that, is that accurate, Mr. Dickover? It would be. I don't uh, know exactly which way the board wants to go on this, either to grant the variance or to deny it. Your findings seem to be uh, not unanimous on a number of the factors. Uh, so I can prepare a decision that both grants the application and a decision that denies the application. And the board then could deliberate on each of them. Um, uh, the other alternative this evening would be a motion to direct me to prepare a decision granting the variance, uh, or, 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 and if that doesn't uh, pass, a motion to prepare a decision that would deny the variance. Uh, Joe, you have something? Perhaps the board isn't, isn't ready to do that tonight, so I would prepare. Uh, addition rather than the two-story addition? The, um, the board's uh, duty is to grant the minimum, sorry, let me, let me rephrase that. If the board were inclined to grant a variance, you should do so in the, in the minimum variance that would meet the applicant's uh, needs. Uh, 
Um, so the answer to your question is yes. Uh, you, 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 your, your job is to grant a minimum variance if you're going to grant one at all. So essentially what you're saying, I believe, is that we could put a condition on the variance to state that it could be one story as opposed to two. You could because, do that. Because the variance would essentially remain the same from a setback perspective. It's simply the height of the building, which is a, would be a separate condition. The, the variance, that, that's correct. Uh, okay. But I think you need to keep in mind whether or not doing so meets the needs of, of the applicant or not. They, they haven't asked for that. In fact, I think they've said uh, during your discussions with them that uh, one story would not fit their needs. I think I heard that. I, mean, I, I defer to the minutes on it. I think we should either go one way or the other. And if by chance they want to come back with a different plan, they could reapply. But I don't think we should... Uh, grant a variance based on reducing the size of the building. I think we should do one or the other. So you're saying vote on the variance as requested rather than placing. Correct. And if they if they want to change it, they can they can resubmit. Right. And the problem or opportunity that arises there is then it would be a rehearing, unless the variance were to change from a setback perspective, which would require a unanimous not a unanimous, a super majority of the board. Um, and that could be problematic. That's true. Right, let me just address that for a minute. If the if a new application were to be to were be to, were to be submitted that sought a, a different construction, I, I believe my opinion on that would be that that would not require unanimous vote and it would not be a rehearing. Although the variant, the, the variance being requested would be the same, the project change. Okay, then that's and fine. So, and I don't, I don't my, my opinion on that would be that it would not be a rehearing. Yeah, that's how I understood it also, Mr. Dickover, that. You know what, quite honestly, I, I, I think we should, I think we should prepare, prepare a, uh, denial. You're breaking up there, Kevin. What? Say that again. I would, I would, are we going to make one of each and then vote on it next month? Or are we going to correct it now and do it? I can do that. Hey, hey, Kevin, I think the easiest way to do this is to make a motion and see if somebody seconds it and how the vote goes on it. If you, in other words, if you feel one way, you can make a motion and let the board decide how it feels in regards to your motion. I just think there's too many, there's too many issues with this project. And I would, I think we should give a denial, uh, a negative. So, so do you want to make a motion that we deny the variance based on the discussion that we had this evening? That's correct. I'll second that motion based on the current variance uh, conversations that we had. So we're clear, Madam Chair, it appears that the motion would be to direct council to prepare a decision consistent with the board's finding this evening denying the variance. Right, but we're going to take a roll call vote on that and see how that goes. <laughs> that's the motion. That's the motion that's motion. before the board right now. Right. Motion in a second. Okay. Andrew seconded it. Okay. So how do you vote, Joe? I vote um, aye. Um, Andrew? Aye. Um, Craig? No. Kevin? Aye. And I vote aye. So uh, Mr. and Mrs. DeVito, it looks like at this point, the, the um, board has made a decision to vote on a vote not to grant the variance as requested. That doesn't mean you can't come back before the board with a different plan. Well, we, we don't have an issue doing a one level. I mean, we're just, it's my mother-in-law. I mean, if, if we have to go one <laughs> to, you know, to take care of them. That's what we need to do. I mean, obviously we, it, it, the aesthetics of, yeah, at this point, we really can't go back and forth to be honest with you. Their house is sold. They're gonna have nowhere to live. We're in contract with our house that's sold. So we're, we're kind of in a jam now. This is, you know. Madam Chair, say? if I may. Yes. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we prepare, uh, direct counsel to prepare a, 
an acceptance of the variance with a condition for one story on the on the um, addition, uh, pursuant to the discussions that we've had this evening. So that would be two decisions can that, to vote on. Can we do can, that, Mr. Can Chair? That, yes. Can that be done now that we've ha had a vote already on the issuance of a denial? We're directing him to prepare the decision. The, let, me, let me just speak to this for a second. The motion is to direct council to prepare a decision the board, that the board would vote on next month. Um, it, and there, that motion's been adopted and approved. I can do that. I've, as directed, I will do that. Another motion to, to prepare a decision granting the variance uh, based on a limiting factor of being at one story rather than two can also be made and I would prepare that decision as well. The board then would have them to deliberate on next month and vote them, you know, both vote them. Call the question on both. That's why we do it this way, because you've got a board now that's not, you know, unanimous on its feelings. Um, if you adopt or make this next motion to direct council to prepare a decision consistent with the board's finding this evening, granting the variance, or limiting the construction of one story, I can do that. I made that motion. Undertake that deliberation next month. Greg, would that, would that motion include the sunroom? Yes. So one level. It's, it's part of the first level. Okay. I so. second Greg's motion. So how, so now we vote on whether or not to draw up this decision, correct? That's what we're voting on? Okay. Andrew, how do you vote? Uh, you want me to come back to you? Madam Chair, I need a moment. Okay. Kevin, how do you vote? I vote no. Joe, how do you vote? I vote aye. Craig, how do you vote? Aye. Andrew, you want? So I, I vote no also. How do you vote, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what we're, just so that I'm clear, we're, we're, right now we're voting on uh, uh, a council to prepare uh, a decision granting the variance based on a single floor according to the current dimensions of that as it stands in the initial variance request? Yes. I vote no. So Mr. Dickover, that means that that decision would not be? Uh, that motion fails. It fails. So that decision would not be, uh, there would be no draft decision for a one level um, at, the, at, the, at this time, that's correct. Okay. So Mr. and Mrs. DeVito, um, it looks like at this point um, that the variance will probably be denied. But, um, you know, you can, you can come back. Go through this now. And I'm sure all you, I'm sure all you have elders that you're going to have to take care of somebody. So I just want to thank everybody for their decision. And we'll let them know tomorrow. All righty. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, Disgusting. Do I have a move, a motion to um, adjourn our meeting? Wait a minute. We got one more here. We have one more. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Magnello. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah. yes. Yes. And he stayed on all this time. I know, I know. And I, I just realized because I looked down on my on my uh, desk here and I saw the saw the paper. Um, okay, so we've kept this public hearing open. So we're waiting for a two thirty nine on this, but we're going to discuss the five questions, and then based on whatever we discuss, we're going to ask council to draw up a decision based a draft decision based on that discussion, and we'll pending receipt of the 239 will vote on it next month. Is that correct, Mr. Dickover? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this is the variance request to demolish an existing garage and build 
a new garage on the same um, foundation, possibly a foot or so higher. Um, so the first question, will the granting of this variance produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or create a detriment to nearby properties? Applicant says, if granted the variance, there will be no un undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. The garage will not be in a different location than where it currently is located. It will be in the same location that it is in now. Um, Agree. I can't see how this could be an undesirable change. Um, it'd probably be an improvement. <laughs> I agree with the applicant. Most definitely it'd be an improvement. I agree. Okay. Agree. Okay, so we agree with the applicant on that. Number two, can the benefit you seek be achieved by some other feasible method other than the variance? Um, I would need the variance to be able to complete my garage the correct way. I mean, if you look at his yard and the plan, he can't move the garage. I mean, he's right. It would be in the middle, and then is you know to get in it from the driveway would be it would be difficult. So there's really no other place to put it, and there's one already there. So anyone else? Anyone disagree with the applicant? Agree. Agree. Okay. Agree. Um, how substantial is the variance you're requesting? Uh, the applicant says the condition of my garage is unsafe. I'm unable to store my vehicles in the garage. Um, I don't think it's substantial. In the, he's not asking for a larger footprint or relocation or- Hey, he's not changing anything. He's, no, he's just, you know, just possibly the height. I agree so, with you, Madam Chair. I've got one, one point I'd like to bring up here, if sure. I may. Um, this is kind of like uh, pre-existing non-conforming. Right, I believe. It, I, 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 nothing was mentioned about that uh, in the original documents that we received from the building department. And I thought about it and everything, but isn't it, um, I know Karen, you asked about smaller and I thought to rebuild a, a pre-existing non-conforming, it has to be substantial, uh, not substantially, it has to be in less size. But in this case, as you say, I mean, a 19 foot garage isn't all that wide. Yeah. If you're going to be storing stuff in it, so I, but I just wanted to bring that point up. I, I could agree with it, uh, as stated. That's a good point, um, Joe. Mr. Dickover, do you have any comment on that? I do not. I, I okay. haven't really thought about it, so I hate to comment on it without. Having no news is good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, number four, will the granting of the variance have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions of the neighborhood or district? Applicant says it will not. The garage is not moving from the site spot. It is already located. It will be an environmental improvement, I believe. I agree. I <laughs> agree, Mr. Brady. One too. <laughs> I agree. Okay. And number five, is the alleged difficulty self-created? Um, applicant says it is not self-created. I bought the house with the garage in its current location. Um, however, you also bought it in its current condition, so it probably is self-created <laughs> in that respect. Um, what does everyone think? It doesn't matter. It, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't, I mean, in this it, case. I could, I could argue both sides of this coin yeah. because yes, um, it, it self-created by tearing it down and rebuilding it, but um, leaving it in its current condition might be a hazard which he would be cited for. So uh, maybe not self-created. I don't think it matters. It, it's. I agree, uh, Mr. Brady. The determination on this is not going to change anything. No, no. So um, do I have a motion to? Uh, oh, we've got to wait for the two thirty-nine. We can still be lead agency and make it a type two though, right? Correct. Okay, so I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we're keeping this public hearing open until um, next month to wait for the 239. Can you we gonna, make it maybe a favorable decision uh, in the meantime? Well, I was just going to say that. Yeah. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah. You can do this. <laughs> who's gonna, who's gonna try this one? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin is. No, I forgot it already. <laughs> uh, so I would like to make a motion to direct council to prepare a favorable motion based on the uh, determination 
uh, by the county that we are in fact lead agency. And our discussion this evening. And our discussion. <laughs> Is that good, Mr. Dickover? I like it the way I did it better, but that was close <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a lot more years. Right? So I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll second the motion, <laughs> number one. Okay. And, and then I'll add that for next month, I'll try to actually write up those words in a format that Mr. Dickover can approve that we all have so we can read it on our screen. There we go. There you go. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, I, I can really make it a lot easier on you people if you would listen to me for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I will state the motion. Sure. There you I go. suggest that a board member adopt it and ask for, Madam Chair would then ask for a second. Even better. And call the question. Oh, nice. So okay. as an example, in this matter, the motion would be a motion to direct council to draw a decision consistent with the board's findings of this evening, granting the variance. A member then could move that motion as their own or adopt that motion as their own, call for a second, and then call the question. You got that, Jess? So uh, now a uh, member would. I, I would, would I'll motion make that motion. By council. I'll so make the motion as stated by council. <laughs> I will make the motion as stated by council. I move the motion as stated by council. Wait, so I'm, are we removing the previous no, motion, no, no, even no, no, though no, it was basically the same? This is discussion. <laughs> okay, just making sure. I'll second it. Whatever it is. No, I seconded it already. <laughs> All right, Greg seconded it. it. And then, Madam Chair, you would call the question. I would, I do what? I'm sorry. You would, you would call the question. Call the Roll question. Call. Oh, okay. My sound is not right. These speakers don't work with this computer, the new computer and the old speakers. <laughs> okay. So um, then I would say, how do you vote? Right? Each person. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> it was for discussion only this evening. Right, that was an right, example. Right. Thank right. God. Next month. <laughs> We'll forget. I'm going to have to replay the video just to learn. All right. So, are we going to do a roll call? I think, I think they did it already. Did we did 17 it on the first okay. one, right? <laughs> so, Jess, do you need another roll call? Do you want us to no. practice? Uh, one? Uh, yes. Please, no. Thank you. We, we can do a practice. There you go. <laughs> no, wait. I have an idea. I'll make a motion that we adjourn the meeting with no further business to conduct. I'll, I'll second, second that. that. All in favor? Aye. 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 That was unanimous, Jess. Okay, thanks. <laughs> thank All you, right. Mr. Dickover. So You're yeah, welcome, thank folks. you very much. And thank you, Mr. Egan. We appreciate it very, very much. You all have a great month. Stay safe, stay healthy. You do the same. Yes. Well, yes. You too, Kevin. And we'll see you in February. Yes, February 10th, I believe. Who knows, Craig? We might be back at the table soon. You never know. Um, I don't know the way COVID's going. I think you're an optimist, but you know what? I like optimists. I've, I've always been an optimist. Yeah. All right. Take care, everybody. Yes. Thank good you, night everybody, night. for a good meeting. So, um, Mr. Agnello, you come back next month. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.